on this week's UBC From Here. Designing a healthier Okanagan Valley. I think the uniqueness of this partnership is there are partnerships that we work on with the university that relate to the medical school and other issues like that. But this is looking more at issues that affect the health of our community. It's more than just about the delivery of health care. And so we're looking at ways in which we can partner with the university, with the city, to impact the health of our residents. Thriving at UBC Okanagan. I can't believe how big Thrive has grown. It started three years ago and last year we had over 4,000 participants and we expect to have have close to that again this year and we've actually brought Thrive across the country so we have 10 other universities that are participating in Thrive and celebrating Nobel Prize recipients. Faculty members here at the university that have some specialty in each of the prizes and they will explain why each prize was given and what the contribution has been. <laughs> Well, I'm teaching intro to marketing to my students for that I do believe that applications applying their knowledge to the real life activities is very important for that. So instead of like having the student to work on some fictitious projects, I do believe that the student will benefit with working with the partner organization in this region. In the very beginnings of the term, so I'm thinking about I have to pick a theme for my student project. So I kind of like relate my research with my student activities, so I pick healthy living as a theme of this year's research project. What the car share is currently doing with UBCO students is we're working with third year marketing students that approached us and they're working on a marketing campaign on how to promote car sharing on campus. A healthy living term project that we have has been a great <laughs> experience not only to help our learning but working with the company it's great to be involved in, in something that can actually make a change for the company and on campus for, for students and staff. So what I'm getting from this class is real world experience where I'm working with an actual company that is from Kelowna which is nice because I'm working in my community, helping out my community, just learning from how businesses actually work, how marketing is really working. It's kind of the ultimate hands-on example and what you say and what you research actually is going to a cause to help people rather than just for, for a grade. It's more, it's more than just a grade really for this project. For us as the car share, I think connecting with the university is really important to us. UBCO is all about innovation and we think you know, car sharing can be, play a part in you know, for the university to be more innovative and more on their everyday operational issues. So I think this partnership is, is really important in, in really fostering this, this relation. Within these projects, for that there are sort of 17 partner organizations. We have a number of regional district included, including the size from small like New Philadelphia of Numbers to a city of Kelowna, and also we have a number of like, non-profit organizations or different health-related programs participate this year as well. It's amazing the change that we've seen with respect to participants is they know what Thrive is about. So for the first three years people needed to know the definition and the objectives of Thrive, whereas people get it now. As soon as you say Thrive they know it's about mental health, they know they're going to get free stuff, and they come to great events like this free yoga class and they participate. 
This year we've really gone into the faculties and working with students at a much greater level. We've really done what we set out to do. So originally when we started Thrive, we wanted staff, students and faculty involved and it was predominantly staff and then it's migrated over the last three years and this year we have a ton of student involvement. We have over 33 events this year and we are doing things like bannock making and a smudging ceremony in Aboriginal services. We've got bark therapy again this year as well as we're doing a workshop on preventing bullying and harassment again in the workplace because it was such a huge success last year. I can't believe how big Thrive has grown. It started three years ago and last year we had over 4,000 participants and we expect to have close to that again this year. And we've actually brought Thrive across the country. So we have 10 other universities that are participating in Thrive. And today we're actually doing a yoga challenge with the University of Winnipeg to see who can have the biggest yoga and Zumba class. So we're really starting to evolve and it's a movement across Canada and universities and looking at campus health overall. It's just been an amazing windfall for us to have so much recognition and participation. Bell Night is a gathering of faculty members here at the university that have some specialty in each of the prizes and they will explain why each prize was given, what the contribution has been. I'll be presenting some information about the Nobel Prize in Physics and that was given to three individuals and these three individuals introduced the blue LED which sounds incredibly simple. I mean, it sounds like just another Christmas light, but ultimately that, that was the was missing the link. Missing that was the piece of the puzzle that we needed to create white light LEDs for highly energy efficient lighting. And so we've seen a lot of technologies come about from that. This discovery of the blue LED is actually a cornerstone of much of my work, which relates to this optical wireless communication concept. Can we take these same lighting ideas and use them to communicate information in a wireless format? And so I owe a lot to these three individuals. I'm introducing the Nobel Prize in Literature. So this year it's a Frenchman, Patrick Modiano. So I'm going to be talking about a little bit the controversy around that choice and also why his lifelong work got this prize. An event like Nobel Night is a representative of education. So at a university we carry out education, but typically it's with classroom and students. But an event like this, an evening like this, is an opportunity to share that knowledge with the general public and tell them about some of the big things that we've seen in the world today. An event such as this is important because it allows us to really reflect on what these large contributions have been and why they were chosen to begin with. They've had huge impacts on our lives and it's important to appreciate them and to also reflect on what it means. I think it's a chance for the community at large to just find out from people who 
are closer to the field of expertise in question to know what these people did to impact their respective field. And it's a chance also to celebrate learning and knowledge and what better place to do it than here on campus. What we hope that the audience gets from this is an opportunity to notice much of the research that happens not only at universities but that happens all around the world and the impact that that research can have on our lives. It feels wonderful. I mean, arts and humanities are a big part of knowledge and culture, and I think it's really important that we keep it that way. It's easy to think of the Nobel Prize as science, and sometimes we need to be reminded of the other aspect of the prizes. Many of these awards are just fundamental discoveries that at the time that this research is happening, the impact isn't even considered really. And it's only years later that we realize, <laughs> that we realize the effect that it's had. Be the person. Be the person. Be the person. Who helps their friends understand sexual consent. Consent is not only words, but actions as well. Who knows how to help a friend who's been a victim of sexual assault by providing medical and emotional support. Who stands up to rape culture and avoids using offensive, sexually inappropriate language. Be the person. Be the person. Be the person. Be that voice. Be the voice of Sarah. The event is a four-day engineering competition. It's the oldest one in Canada. It's definitely the biggest and most spirited. There's about 440 engineering students here, plus a lot of spectators, faculty. The first event is opening ceremonies, and then we do Tech X Day, which is what we're doing right now. So it's like a career fair setup where teams have booths, and they basically show off their toboggans and all their technical designs for everything. And then the ultimate goal is our end day. It's race day at Big White at Tube Town and everybody will compete. They'll do a speed race, they'll do a slalom race, and then they'll do a knockout head-to-head -head for King of the Hill Championship. The event switches locations every year. This is the first year that UBCO has ever been able to host the event. We tried to put our own spin on it, so we were hosting a concert on Friday night. I don't think that's been done in recent history. Plus, we have some really epic ski resorts, so Big White hosting the competition, world-class resort, so it's a really nice venue for us to do it at. We're here at Big White down in Happy Valley and we're hosting the great Northern Concrete Toboggan Race. We're very happy to be partnered here with UBCO and UBC to host over 400 engineering students from all over Canada and America as well. There is so much enthusiasm, so much energy in the air, everyone's so happy to be here and we're just so excited to be part of it. Since UBCO is a relatively new campus, it's nice to kind of get us on the map. We got second at last year's competition, so outperforming these large campuses from Eastern Canada really looks good on the School of Engineering at UBCO. Our main goal is to have a great time because this competition is so much fun. The past two or three years I've been involved in this and it's been like the, the two or three best weekends I've had throughout university. 